Hi, my name is Samuel Yexo, and today I'll be talking about the paper Data Efficient Hierarchical Reinforcement Learning by authors Ofer Nachung, Shi Xianggu, Hong Lakli, and Sergey Levine. The outline of my presentation will be as follows. First, I'll talk about the introduction, then I'll go over some background knowledge, then I'll go over the main contributions of this paper, I'll talk about some related works, then I'll look at some experimental results, and finally I'll conclude. Deep reinforcement learning algorithms have done pretty well in areas which have relatively small action and state spaces. Uh, so areas like Atari games or even Go, which has uh, finite many states and finally many actions, or even uh, simple continuous control tasks, which even though uh, they have uh, an infinite action space and state space, it's still relatively simple. Um, but when these action and state spaces are large and, and continuous, um, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done in order to have well-performing deep reinforcement learning algorithms that are sample efficient and are able to generalize well to these problems. So imagine it's the future and you have a robot made that you'd like to pick up groceries for you. Now, how would it go about doing that? If it were a human made, then the task would be pretty simple. It would just need to break down the overall request into further and further lower levels until it got to a point where it was uh, easily accomplishable. So on the top level, it would be, you would go to the store, you'd buy groceries and you'd come back. Uh, if we were to break down the go to store uh, task even further, it would require leaving the house, walking down the street and entering the store. Further breaking down the leaving the house part, you would walk to the front door, open the door, walk through the door, close the door and lock the door. Now, if you were to break down the walk to front door part, it would basically consist of uh, motor actions which aren't consciously processed. So at this level, the human uh, no longer has to consciously think about what they have to do in order to accomplish the task. So this is inherently a hierarchical method of uh, processing co commands and trying to accomplish tasks. Uh, and hierarchical reinforcement learning, or AHRL, is the area of reinforcement learning which is trying to apply the benefits of hierarchical reasoning to reinforcement learning. In hierarchical reinforcement learning, uh, there are multiple layers of policies that are learned, and the higher level policies will act over the lower level policies, um, uh, selecting or commit, uh, trying to control how they run. So there are many benefits that are presumed to come with this. Um, part of it is temporal and behavioral abstraction. So the higher level policies will act on a higher uh, time and, and behavior uh, abstraction from the lower policies. They'll be acting over much broader time scales, um, not on the step-by-step -step, uh, basis. And uh, also they'll be able to abstract away uh, lower level policies and implementations. Uh, also, there's a much smaller action space for high higher level policies. Uh, so the higher level policies will only have to act over um, which lower level policies to implement or how to implement them and not on the finer uh, motor control uh, actions that the lower level policies will have to act over. And also, there's a more reliable credit assignment. So the higher level policies will be 
rewarded based on uh, well the highest level would be rewarded based on the rewards that come from the environment but uh, in most HRL uh, implementations at least um, the higher level policies will be able to provide rewards to the lower level policies depending uh, based on how well they accomplish the tasks that they have been uh, assigned and so uh, credit assignment is much more easier uh, for hierarchical reinforcement learning. So this paper introduces HERO or hierarchical reinforcement learning with off-policy correction. This algorithm uh, is a two-layer design, so it has a high-level policy and a low-level policy. The high-level policy selects goals for the low-level policy to try to accomplish, and these goals are implemented uh, as a, a state observation, which the high-level policy would like to uh, see. And it uses an off-policy uh, correction in order to increase uh, sample efficiency. So now I'll be going over some background information. So HERO uses something called off-policy temporal difference learning. Now, what this consists of is it uses TD3, uh, which is a variant of the DDPG algorithm. And here for DDPG, uh, there's a Q function parameterized by theta, and it's trained to minimize the average Bellman error over all sample transitions. And there's also a deterministic policy uh, mu, which is parameterized by phi. And it's trained to yield actions which maximize the Q value of each state. And there's also a behavior policy, uh, which is used to collect experience. And it's augmented with Gaussian noise, which is helpful for the off policy correction. Next, I'll be looking at the main contributions of the paper. So HERO has two layers of policies, a high level policy and a low level policy. So the high level policy observes the state and produces a high level action or a goal state. This goal state is of the same size as the state space. So it essentially corresponds to uh, a state which the high level policy would like to observe. Every C steps, a new goal is uh, produced. And otherwise, there is a transition function H which produces intermediary goals. Give, uh, it takes in the previous state, previous goal, and the current state in order to do that. Now, the low-level policy observes the state and the goal and produces a low-level action, A. The environment uh, yields a reward, capital R, and the low-level policy uh, receives an intrinsic reward, lowercase r, which uh, is equal to the a parameterized reward function R, which takes in the state, goal, action, and next state. The low level policy also uh, is stores this experience, which includes the state, goal, uh, action, reward, next state, and the uh, transition, so the next uh, goal the, uh, after this current goal, uh, and it stores that for off policy training. And the high level policy stores the experience of all the states, so every every C uh, steps, it'll store all the states from uh, time step t to uh, time step uh, t plus c minus one, all the goals for that range, all the actions that happen during that range, and all the rewards, as well as the uh, final ending state for uh, at that moment, also for off policy training. So another important aspect of the HERO algorithm is parameterized rewards. So the goal G of T is specified as the difference between the current state S of T and a desired state S of T plus G of T. A simple goal transition model could be uh, the state, current state S of T plus uh, the goal G of T minus S of T plus one. So what this does is 
as s of t changes from time to time from as t changes, uh, the desired state s of t plus g of t does not change. It's kept constant. Also, there's a, an intrinsic reward function, which is based off of the Euclidean distance between the current observation and the goal observation that we're trying to uh, see. So uh, over here, uh, the, the negation of the Euclidean distance uh, of s of t plus g of t minus s of t plus 1. So the low-level policy is trained uh, with an input space that includes s of t and g of t. So the g of t is, from just a pure RL standpoint, treated as part of the state space. So uh, you'll see mu low uh, with uh, taking in s of t and g of t together. It's just treated as part of the, the state. Um, and so these intrinsic rewards, um, they provide a dense signal that's uh, relevant and it's immediate uh, right from the start of training uh, before even any task related rewards are available. So it's very uh, useful in the, for providing a signal during training. Here we see a, a diagram of the basic design of Hero. So you have the high level uh, policy, which uh, gives goals to the low level policy. And the low level policy provides actions to the environment, which uh, gives its state to the low level policy and the high level policy, and also provides rewards. Now for each time step, uh, H is reply, uh, applied to the, the goal, so that the goal uh, transitions uh, from time to time. And once C, C time steps is, uh, is accomplished, uh, the high level policy provides a new goal for the low level policy. So here is a simple example of a two level hierarchical reinforcement learning uh, task. So here the high level policy is designated by the blue box and the low level policy is designated by the pink box. And the target is to reach the green arrow, but the red block is standing in the way. So here the blue box, the high level policy, is, is providing a goal for the low level policy, the pink box, to achieve. So it's telling the, the low level policy to move to that specific area. And the low level policy has to figure out how to do that. Once that's accomplished in the second, uh, in the center here, uh, the high level policy provides a new goal, which essentially makes the low level policy perform a pushing action on the red block so that it pushes it to the right. And once that's accomplished, the high level policy directs the low level policy to move towards the green arrow so that it can reach the goal. The final major contribution of this paper is uh, off-policy corrections for the higher level training. So there have been previous two-level uh, hierarchical reinforcement learning algorithms which use on-policy training. So as the lower level policy is trained, the higher level policy is trying to solve a, a non-stationary problem because the the sort of goals that it's supposed to give the lower level policy uh, in order for it to accomplish its tasks change as the lower level policy gets better at accomplishing tasks. So the problem is changing for the higher level policy as it's getting trained. Um, and old off policy experience may have different transitions uh, for the same state and goal. But off-policy algorithms generally have better uh, sample efficiency than on-policy algorithms. So in order for Hero to be able to take advantage of the off-policy uh, benefits, such as sample efficiency, uh, it uses an off-policy correction during training. So recall the experience uh, for the higher level policy, which is all of the states from, from t to t plus c minus one all the goals for that time, 
all of the actions, all of the rewards that it receives from the environment, and the final uh, ending state for that uh, for that run. So uh, what we want is to convert this to simple state action reward transitions. So an SFT, a GFT, a sum of all the rewards, and then the final SFT. This can be pushed onto the replay buffer, uh, and then any standard off-policy algorithm can train with this. But the problem is uh, the past instances of lower level policies will exhibit different behavior given the same goals uh, and, and the same uh, state, and it will often uh, end up in different uh, ending states uh, for SFT plus one to SFT plus C. So the idea here is to change the GFT for past high-level uh, policy experiences in order to make the observed action sequence more likely uh, with the current low-level policy. So in the past, um, we observed uh, an action AFT to AFT plus C minus one, uh, which came from the previous uh, low-level policy. Now, what we want is to find uh, a, a G tilde of T to maximize the likelihood of uh, the low level policy producing those same actions given uh, the state that they were in and this new G tilde uh, for the current uh, low level policy. And then we want to relabel the high level experience with that G tilde. So uh, the way to do this, uh, if you take the log of that, uh, that uh, mu low, it's uh, proportional to uh, this uh, the summation right here which is essentially a summation over uh, the, the squared uh, L2 norm between uh, of the action minus the low level policy uh, plus a constant. So to approximately maximize this, instead of applying uh, an arg max, what they do is they choose 10 candidate goals. Eight of these candidate goals are sampled from a Gaussian, which is centered around SFT plus C minus SFT. Uh, so if you recall, this SFT plus C minus SFT is the difference between the uh, last state and the, the, uh, the starting state for a specific run. So what this is saying is if, for example, the uh, if the low-level policy was uh, executing correctly and uh, the it arrived at the desired state, this is uh, SFT plus C minus SFT would essentially be the goal of uh, that was provided to that policy. If it wasn't uh, performing correctly, well, this was the goal that was uh, essentially uh, used. Additionally, uh, the original goal, GFT, is also a candidate as well. So out of these, uh, and also and the original SFT plus C minus SFT as well. So these 10 candidates are applied to this and a max is chosen. Uh, and whichever goal maximizes that would be uh, chosen to relabel uh, the high level experience. Now we'll be looking at related works. So to help learn uh, useful lower level policies, there are some recent works out there that use auxiliary rewards. So they could be either handcrafted rewards or uh, exploration encouraging rewards. So Hero here uses a, a parameterized reward function. Uh, also to produce semantically distinct behavior, uh, there are some recent works that pre-train the lower level policy on diverse tasks. Um, this requires 
similarly suitable tasks, uh, and it's not general. So the hero doesn't uh, do this. Also, there is a, an algorithm called hierarchical actor critique, which uses off policy training, but it does so without a correction factor. So this ignores the uh, non-stationarity uh, problem. Also, uh, there's a feudal networks, which is the most, uh, according to this paper, the closest algorithm uh, to hero. Uh, and it also uses goals and parameterized lower level rewards. But the, the goals and rewards are computed in terms of a learned state representation and not directly as, as in hero, where the goals is uh, specified in terms of the uh, direction that the state, uh, the current state should move in in order to reach the desired state. So Hero uses raw goals and states uh, representations, so it can immediately train on intrinsic rewards without having to train uh, a goal representation. So now we'll be looking at experiments. So here there are four environments which the algorithm was evaluated on. There's the ant gather uh, environment, uh, which has a simulated ant, uh, which has to navigate the area and gather apples while avoiding bombs, which are randomly placed around the environment at each episode. Uh, the upper right has uh, the ant maze environment, which uh, has a U-shaped corridor, which the ant must navigate in order to reach various locations. There's the ant push environment, which we previously saw. So in this task, there's a, a movable block, which the agent has to interact with. Um, a greedy agent here would just move forward, uh, unknowingly pushing the movable block until it blocks uh, the path of the target. So to successfully reach the target, the ant has to first move to the left of the block and then push the block to the right, and then it would be able to reach the target. Finally, there's the ant fall environment. So here, uh, the task has three dimensions, not just two. So if it just moves forward because it sees the, the target right in front of it, it's going to fall into the pit and be trapped. So in order to actually reach the target, it has to move over to the right, push the block forward, uh, and then use the block as the bridge in order to reach the target. So here there's a comparative analysis between Hero and some other algorithms. So the best policy is obtained in 10 million steps of training here, and it's averaged over 10 randomly seeded trials with standard error. Comparisons are done to feudal networks, stochastic neural networks for HRL, so SNN for HRL, uh, and variational uh, information maximizing exploration. Uh, VIM. Uh, some of these algorithms are uh, problem specific, and so they're modified to be uh, fair, fair, more fairly compared. As you can see, uh, Hero here uh, completely uh, beats all of these algorithms in all four uh, environments that it was tested on. So here are the results of Hero and a number of variants on the testing environments. So each plot shows uh, the average reward for AntGather or the average success rate for the rest uh, over 10 randomly seeded trials, with the x-axis being in millions of environment steps. So here the, the algorithm Hero and its variants uh, with lower level uh, relabeling, with pre-training, with no off policy correction and finally no HRO. So the lower level relabeling, what this is essentially is it increases the amount of data available to an agent trained using a parameterized reward by relabeling the experiences with randomly sampled goals. So for this, uh, you can see that it peaks fairly early and then plateaus. Um, 
without reaching the optimal policy or the high level uh, rewards. Uh, so it's uh, presumed that it's it's helpful for early training, um, but it doesn't. Uh, once it reaches a certain level, it it no longer helps with uh, reaching the optimal policy. Uh, next, with pre-training, uh, so what this is is uh, for two million steps, the low-level policy is trained, and then after that's done, it's frozen, and then for the rest of the training. A high level policy is trained on the frozen low level policy. So, this uh, you can see that it does very well for ant gather, but it doesn't do as well for ant maze, ant push, and ant fall. And the reason why uh, that happens is because for the three more complicated environments ant maze, ant push, and ant fall once the lower level policy is uh, frozen it's no longer able to learn uh, low-level uh, actions uh, that might need to be uh, relearned now that it's in uh, a different environmental areas. So for example, uh, the ant fall environment where uh, you have to learn to push the block into the hole and then uh, move over the hole, uh, move over the block. Though uh, the lower level policies won't be trained on uh, doing actions over on the other side of the of the of the of the hole. So it's only trained on actions uh, in the early first two million steps uh, before uh, the higher level policy is actually able to learn to even reach the other side of uh, the the gap. So for the ant gather environment, the reason why it's able to do so well is because there's actually it's actually a very simple environment uh, where the only goal is to avoid um, the bombs and to to reach the uh, the apples. So because of this, the low level policy is able to to learn very quickly what needs to be done, and once it's frozen. Uh, nothing else needs to be done uh, in order to train it to, to, to do better on anything else because uh, the environment uh, doesn't have too much difference uh, from area to area. Now, with uh, no off policy correction, the harder tasks such as the ant push, the ant maze, uh, the ant fall uh, become too difficult. Uh, so the, I mean the ant push and the ant fall specifically. Um, so you can see the green, uh, they become very, uh, the, the, the policies don't do very well uh, compared to hero. And with no HRL, uh, you could barely see it. The only uh, one where it does uh, uh, any significant amount would be on ant push. So now I'll be concluding the presentation. Uh, first, a summary of the main contributions. So HERO is a general approach for training a two-layer uh, hierarchical reinforcement learning algorithm. Uh, the goals are specified in terms of the difference between the desired state and the current state. Uh, there's a low-level policy, which is trained on parameterized rewards. And both policies are trained concurrently in an off policy manner. So this leads to high sample efficiency. And there's an off policy correction, which is applied, which allows for the use of past experience for training the higher level policy. For future work, uh, I would like to see this algorithm applied to more difficult tasks. So the current task was fairly uh, simple. The state space and the action spaces were both uh, fairly low dimensional and the environment was fully observed. So I would like to see how this, uh, this work or improvements could be used to solve more uh, difficult tasks with, with higher dimensionality and, 
uh, partial observability. That concludes this presentation. Thank you.